all I have to say is I hope we run out of minerals soon because I'm losing my mind doing all of this research. And if you guys missed the vlog yesterday, I am again sporting the new Wi-Fi shielding clothing, all black, sweatsuit, joggers to protect you from radio frequency, cell phones, routers, the predominant form of radiation. So you guys can go to wifi shielding.com to check this out. It's more coverage and more suitable for the cooler weather compared to the tank top and shorts we were offering. Zinc is an interesting mineral to discuss because out of all of the minerals, it's the most predominant one on a carnivore diet. As you know, I was carnivore for almost eight years. So despite many people, especially those following a standard American diet, being deficient in zinc, a large percentage of my followers have been or still are carnivore, and that requires a slightly different approach. It is said, however, that over 25% of the world has some degree of zinc deficiency, and I'm guessing it's actually way more than that. With many nutrients, the problem isn't necessarily the paper value of zinc consumption. It lies within the bioavailability of it in the food you're eating. The concern here is with plant-based zinc sources versus animal-based. Certain indigenous people didn't have access to as much meat as they could ever want, so they had to use specific preparation methods to reduce the anti-nutrient content of plant foods so they could absorb the zinc in those plant foods more efficiently. Specifically, phytic acid, phytates, inhibit the zinc absorption from those foods. When we look at the highest zinc food sources, it's pretty obvious why most people are deficient. Conventional wisdom highlighted in mainstream media paints red meat as the devil. You ask anyone, of course, steak is bad for you. The cholesterol is going to clog your arteries. Other animal protein sources aren't as high in zinc due to their feed quality, pork, chicken being much lower than beef in most cases. The nutrient content of any food we consume is dependent on its soil origin. That means the plant foods you eat are ideally grown in mineral rich soil and the animals you consume, the meat, are fed plant matter that is also grown in mineral rich soil. So if you secret society scumbags want to steal another one of my terms I come up with, there you go, soil origin. Uh, they really ran with the one animal-based diet faster than they run to a preschool. Uh, so, as with the past, I think, few months now, foods in blue are what I think are okay, red not so much, and with zinc, basically everything that's high in zinc seems to be pretty safe from a liver health and overall health perspective. And we have beef on here a few times because I want to show the variance in the soil quality. You know, beef chuck, beef ground, beef ribs, you know, if they all have a similar fat percentage, uh, the water protein content should have the same amount of zinc, but that's not the case because they were probably from different cattle grown in different places. I don't think king crab you know, is that great because all bottom dwellers in the ocean are polluted. I mean, all seafood is so polluted and toxic, I wouldn't need it. That being said, how often do you get to have king crab? So in that case, I'd say, even though I put it in red, you might as well enjoy the king crab. And just like beef, lamb is an excellent source of zinc. Lentils, heard a lot of negatives, doesn't sit well in most people's stomachs, so I would stay away from that. But you know, a slice of Swiss cheese on rye bread sounds very tasty, and it's also incredibly high in zinc. White beans, cannellini beans, and oats, same with the rye, might be bound up in a little bit of phytic acid, but if it's fermented properly and you're having meat in the diet, you're not really going for those foods for the zinc content, but chances are you're getting a little bit from them. Moving on to mineral interactions of zinc, phosphorus, iron, and copper are synergistic and antagonistic with zinc, which means if one exceeds another, they can inhibit the other's absorption. Sulfur, on the other hand, enhances zinc absorption, while calcium reduces zinc absorption. So let's say you follow a carnivore diet with a lot of eggs. That will drastically increase zinc absorption because eggs are high in sulfur, which we spoke about in our sulfur video. Then the excess zinc will throw off iron and copper and you have a whole catastrophe. 
that is very hard to rebalance and only if you would follow that type of diet for months or years. Some might argue that dairy has enough calcium to negate zinc, but dairy itself is high in zinc. And increasing dietary calcium will lower magnesium, another fiasco to deal with. So the point is, you want to be healthy, follow a balanced omnivorous diet with not too much dairy or eggs. Zinc is used in many tissues in the body, so the benefits are vastly general. Gene expression, enzymatic reactions, immune function, protein and DNA synthesis, wound healing, growth and development. And some minerals have very specific functions. In the case of zinc, it plays a large role in the enzymes needed for your sense of taste and smell. And you know, you could go into the biochemistry and that can help you figure some things out if you analyze it on a molecular level. But the point is, do you feel good or bad? Are you healthy or struggling? Is incorporating more zinc into your diet or taking a supplement going to help with that? You know, are you watching this video and realizing, hey, I don't really eat that much zinc? Which is why we turn to symptoms of deficiency and excess. Better markers of understanding if you need to increase that zinc intake. So with deficiency, you have frequent sickness, hair loss, poor appetite, loss of taste and smell, skin sores, slow growth, vision problems, slow wound healing, and for toxicity, it's listed nausea, vomiting, lethargy, and fatigue. But zinc supplementation is definitely one of the more popular ones, especially with the you know what, <laughs> And as with last week with sulfur, you can't look directly at those listed zinc toxicity symptoms. You would actually start experiencing symptoms of deficiencies in minerals that zinc is antagonistic or synergistic with. Mainly copper, which is a regular heartbeat and histamine intolerance, which is why you know, you're on a carnivore diet for a very long period of time. It's high in zinc, it's high in phosphorus, has a lot of iron, not enough copper. But again, it takes a while. It could take months to years before you start getting histamine intolerant symptoms on a carnivore diet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Zinc is important. All of these minerals we talk about are important. But what isn't usually spoken about is the vast mineral requirements throughout developmental stages of life. This matrix of dozens of nutrients needs to be in adequate amounts and ideal balance in order to make a healthy, happy human being which there are unfortunately so few of now. I mean, you know, we're talking physical beauty as well as mental function. Zinc is heavily deficient in that context. The zinc oxide they fortify food with doesn't have a great bioavailability and isn't nearly high enough with how depleted most food is of zinc. If you're eating a pound, a pound and a half of red meat per day, you should be getting plenty of zinc on paper, but Absorption is usually not that great because of so many modern factors affecting our organ function and gut microbiome, hence why I wear silver clothing every day. A hair mineral analysis is a decent test to gauge if you have adequate zinc and supplementing a few times a month certainly won't hurt. We have a zinc supplement available on organsupplements.com, but if you have zinc bicolinate or zinc glycinate, uh, bisglycinate as well is usually how it comes. Those are also excellent choices if they happen to be lying in your cabinet. So thank you guys for joining me today. Hopefully this helps you out. And, and maybe we'll continue this trend until I run out of minerals. So you guys can check out frank defilecom to support me through all of my businesses. If you can please drop a like on the video. Leave a comment down below. Subscribe so that YouTube can unsubscribe you next week. And be sure to check that notification bell so they don't notify you of my videos. Thanks again for joining guys. And I'll see you for tomorrow.